As we covered in the last section, the way you create and lay out the views of your app is using Interface Builder, the graphical layout tool built into Xcode. Interface Builder can edit two types of files, nib files and storyboard files. Nib files contain the layout of a single view. Storyboard files contain the layout of multiple views and the navigation relationships between them, called segways. In this chapter and the next few chapters, we'll be working only with nib files so that you can understand the mechanics of how views interact with each other. Once you've mastered the basics, storyboards will help you turbocharge your ability to build multi-view apps quickly and more efficiently. So let's create a new project in Xcode, open its nib file, and take a look at Interface Builder in action. We'll start with File, New, Project. If we're going to do this many times in this course, you'll want to know the keyboard shortcut for this, which is Shift-Command-N. We'll use the single view application template. We'll give it the name Explore IB. And we'll make sure that the Use Storyboards checkbox is unchecked and the Use Automatic Reference Counting checkbox is checked. We'll be using Arc for all the projects in this course. Click Next. And we'll put it here in our folder. And so now what you can see is the standard Xcode layout with the Project Navigator on the left, in this case, the Target Property Editor in the middle. And over here, the Utilities pane on the right-hand side. And we'll select that. If you don't see the Project Navigator over here on the left, you can always get it back by going to the View menu, selecting Navigators, and selecting Show Project Navigator. The shortcut for that is Command-1. And the shortcut for hiding the Navigator is Command-0. As we're going to be using Xcode within this more limited screen that works for our course, I'm going to be hiding the Project Navigator most of the time with Command-0 and bringing it back when I want with Command-1. So I'm going to shrink up Xcode here so the entire thing fits within our window. And similarly for the Utility pane. If it's missing, you can always get it back by going View, Utilities, Show File Inspector, or Quick Help Inspector in this particular case because we have a target selected. And you can get it to go away by saying Hide Utilities, which is Option Command 0. And of course, if you want to bring it back, it's Option Command 1. All right. So before we carry on, you should know that there's a document summarizing the most useful Xcode keyboard shortcuts in the working files. So before we begin, make sure that both the Project Navigator and the Utilities pane with the File Inspector are showing. And then let's click on ViewController.nib. Again, while we're working with Interface Builder in this course, I'm going to hide the Project Navigator most of the time so that we've got more space to be able to look at the code or the Interface Builder layout that we're working with. Remember, you can always bring it back by typing Command-1. Command zero to make it go away. So let's take a look around. We're looking at the layout of a view. On the left hand side, there's two sections of a list here the first one entitled placeholder and the second one entitled objects. In the placeholders, the first one is the files owner, and that has to do with the file that owns this particular view. The first responder has to do with the piece of code that responds to events in this view. And this view down here, this list, is actually all of the objects inside your view. And as we add more objects, you'll see them show up here as children of this view. Now let's look at the Utilities panel. When you have a view selected, there's six mini icons that show up over here. And then there's also these inspectors here, and there's also a library section down here. For now, we're going to minimize the library section so that we can look at just the inspectors. After we've gone through the inspectors, we'll come back and look at the library. In the inspector panel here, the first one we encounter is called the File Inspector. This specifies which file is associated with this view. For now, this is set as needed. We won't need to be changing anything here until we get into a future movie talking about auto layout. To the right of the file inspector is the quick help inspector. The quick help inspector depends on which object is selected within the view outline. This shows a subset of the help information for this particular object and links to get you to the organizer window so you can actually look at the class reference or programming guides or sample code. Frequently, we'll be going to the class reference, so let's click here and bring up the organizer window. We'll shrink the organizer window to fit into our frame here. For any given class, and as you click on any object inside your view and use this link inside the Quick Help, you'll get the link for that particular kind of class, be it a button or a switch and so forth. In this case, we're looking at the reference for the view, and you can see that we have information at the beginning here that says this inherits from NS object. You can see it conforms to a variety of protocols, NS coding, UI appearance, and so forth. You can see which library it lives in, in this case, UI kit. You can see which version of iOS it became available in, in this case 2.0, because Vue is very, very fundamental. As you get further and further into more esoteric things, sometimes you'll see things that were only available beginning in iOS 4, or iOS 5, or iOS 6. You have a link here 
to get to the guide. So for example, we could click here for the programming guide. And then to get back to where we were, we can simply click the back button. And you can see that there are also a number of pieces of sample code. Now each class reference also has an overview, so we can see here. But most importantly, the thing we're going to be looking at a lot, there's a lot of overview information here, is the tasks section. And the tasks section shows all the methods and properties that are public on this particular type of object that you can use to manipulate it. For example, here's an instance method called init with frame. So if you allocate a view, you can call init with frame to create a view within a particular frame. Here are some of the other properties, for example, background color or hidden. And here's an example of a class method. It has a plus sign in front of it. Notice that the instance methods, which require an instance of this type of object, have a minus sign. And class methods also can be thought of as static methods. I always have a plus sign. All right, that's all we're going to do with this particular help information for now. As we start to look at all of the individual controls, we'll go into that help information for each control so that you can understand what are the significant properties, what are the significant methods that are available on that kind of object. We move on to our next inspector. You can see the next inspector is the Identity Inspector. Let's take a look first of all at the files owner in the Identity Inspector. This tells us that this file, the view controller that's associated with this view, is the one called view controller. In our case, there's a bunch of built-in things in the system, but when you get right down to it for our particular project, we only have one view controller, and it's called view controller. And if we bring back the project navigator, you can see that is associated with this view controller.m class. If we had multiple view controller classes, or you built a view and hadn't built the view controller yet and then added it later, this is where, inside this identity inspector, that you would associate this view with the particular view controller class that's going to support it. In this case, we look at the view. You can see that it says UI view, but it's grayed out. That means that the base class for this view is UI view. The only time you would put anything else in here is if you decided to subclass one of the standard views. That's not done very often, but if you decided to do that, this is how you change it. 